please welcome IBM Worldwide CTO Technical Sales Data and AI, Deepak Rangaro. What we have with the single store in IBM is, is this one family of very synergistic capabilities. Okay? I'm going to be talking about uh, two IBM capabilities. Uh, so the, the structure of it is I'm going to spend the first 30 seconds telling you what you already know. And then I'll get into the IBM capabilities itself. First would be stream sets, and then what's next. And then we'll finish off with how does single store and IBM work together? Where, where do they all fit in? Okay? There's a lot of content. We've got 15 minutes. I'm hanging around after the event as well. So please do feel free to you know, ping me anytime. Okay? So here's the part that you already know. There is a lot of data. There's a lot of places that data is residing in. Um, there's challenges because uh, there's, there's redundancies and multiple copies of data being made, which means that uh, there's a potential for loss of quality. Okay? So we're trying to do the best AI. And the challenge with, um, well, anytime you want to get the best AI outcome, you're depending on good quality data. Okay? So here's the obvious part, which you already know. Um, and um, you know, what we're going to see over the next few minutes is what are the capabilities that could address some of these challenges. Okay? I'll start with stream sets. Stream sets is a recent acquisition um, by IBM. Um, we've already got a fairly a strong portfolio in terms of uh, data integration. But what StreamSets brings to us is this near real-time aspect of it. Okay? Uh, pipelines, data integration from a near real-time perspective. So uh, three things. So one is um, ingesting at scale. So there is a lot of data coming in. Obviously, you need to be able to handle it. And you need to be able to scale it, not just vertically, but horizontally as well. Okay? The second aspect of it is uh, data drift. So everyone talks about uh, AI. Um, obviously, if you think about it, right, the, the reason we want to leverage AI is we want to serve our customers better. Okay? So what does that really mean? All the applications that are custom facing, we want to make them better all the time. And what does that translate to? If the applications are constantly evolving, the data is changing all the time. The schema of the data is changing all the time. So if you have pipelines that are dealing with uh, data, with schemas that are changing all the time, and then you have a scenario for data drift. Okay? So in a, in a traditional setup, when you have data drift, the challenge is that the pipelines have to change. So it's not, uh, uh, you know, my application's changed and everything else works. There's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. So what StreamSets is really good at is handling this data drift without having to go and change the pipelines. The pipelines already recognize the, the drift in data, and it already, um, you know, adapts itself. Okay, so that's the, that's the um, uh, key value proposition here. The third aspect of it is there's data coming from all kinds of sources okay, um, uh, in real time. So we have support for uh, streaming data from a variety of data sources. Okay. So now to the, the, um, how do we use it and what are the salient features? So uh, of course, pipelines. So you want something that is intuitive. It's got a drag drop interface. It's fairly intuitive. You can put things together. Okay? And, and I can tell you that I was, you know, uh, started using stream, stream sets relatively recently, and it was a, a fairly smooth transition. I could uh, get it very easily. The second aspect of it is once you've created the pipeline, the um, uh, management and the operationalization of the pipelines is also very important. So every organization's got different kind of scheduling tools, and they, they want the flexibility to go and manage these pipelines and monitor the pipelines uh, using SDK, so full-fledged SDK. The third and the most important aspect of it is, depending on who the customer is and what geography they, they belong to, there are different regulations. There are constraints over you know, where can you um, move the data as you're doing the transformations? Where can you keep the data? Okay? You want to make sure that you're able to not just scale to the high volumes of data, but you're able to do your transformations and you're able to run your pipelines closer to where the data is, or better said is um, you're able to run the pipelines where you're allowed to run the pipelines. Okay? So what StreamSets brings is this control plane and data plane concept where your data plane can run anywhere. 
Okay, and we'll get to that a little more very soon. Again, I'm rushing a little bit just because of the time, but um, I'm, I'm going to be there after. Okay. All right. So now to to what's next. Okay. Again, there's a lot to digest. Um, so just bear with me. Okay. So what's next is the brand. There are three pillars of capabilities. So we've got the AI pillar, then we've got data and governance. Okay. Um, I'll start with the AI pillar and then go to, go to the other ones. Um, with um, what's next AI, what we have is, uh, so Gen AI is new, so we've seen a lot about RAG and uh, all the good things we can do with it. But obviously, we also have, um, uh, you know, the two things to consider is there is the traditional machine learning and AI also to think about, uh, in addition to the Gen AI capabilities. But we also have this um, aspect of um, being able to make the models smarter, okay? So what do I mean by that? Being able to uh, go and fine tune the model and um, you know, bring your institutional knowledge to the model itself. Okay, so it can answer questions better in your context. And the other aspect of it is, um, I'm sure you've heard um, a lot about the context window constraints that you have. So um, with the What's Next AI, one of the other things is we, in addition to fine tuning models, we also have the ability to do prompt tuning. Okay? Uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Okay? So What's Next AI is the AI pillar. So the, the next one down there is the, the data pillar, okay? Of course, all AI that you do depends on the data that you have, okay? And um, you have to be able to manage data, and you have to be able to do something intelligent with data, okay? Um, we, we have um, a, a two-way relationship between data and AI. So one is um, data is coming in in a hurry. There's a lot of data coming in. Some of this might not have meaningful names, so what we want to do is we want to leverage AI to bring meaning to the data that we already have. Okay, so that's one aspect of it. Okay? The second aspect of it is for us to build our AI models, we need the data. Okay, so we have the data management to build or train the models. So that's the other aspect of data. Okay? The third pillar is the governance pillar. Okay. It's great to talk about AI, and AI is fantastic. But of course, if you don't bring responsibility to the AI, then there could be consequences. Okay. So what um, the governance pillar brings is this um, responsibility to AI, being able to um, track uh, everything you're doing around AI so that you're answerable. Okay. Being able to bring stewardship to the notion of AI so that you know, if there is something that, uh, if a question gets asked, you know who to ask the question to, and the person's able to answer the question with um, um, metrics that, that uh, are meaningful. Okay? So again, there's a lot of content, so just bear with me. I, I, I will get to the substance of uh, the details a little more as well. Okay? Um, so I'm going to start with the, a little more in-depth of the dot data pillar. Okay? So what we're trying to do is if you think about it, um, uh, traditionally with data management, of course, we know data management, right? We, um, we came up with databases. So, but uh, with traditional data management, the uh, idea was that the constraint was that uh, it was held in proprietary formats, and then customers were tied to a particular vendor. So one of the things we're trying to do now is to move towards a more scalable, open um, architecture, where the data is held in an open format, so if you see here, highly scalable object stores, that part is great. Um, I've got one example of an open table format here, which is Iceberg. We support other formats as well. And then we've got a shared metadata layer. Because the point of that is um, we understand that there are different um, personas that go and consume the data and do different things with it, okay? which means that they have different choices of what tools they want to use. Okay? Um, you know, if you're a, a data engineer, perhaps Park is the, the most appropriate um, mechanism for you to interact with the data. If you're an analyst, maybe you want some ad hoc uh, analysis tool or ad hoc querying tool. Okay? So the idea here is that we've got open data in an open format with shared metadata that different engines, both IBM and non-IBM engines, can benefit from, single store being one of them. Okay, so we've got IBM engines, we've got also single store uh, that, that gives you the flexibility to use the same data using different engines. Okay? The second aspect of it is um, a hybrid. Okay? One of the things to understand is uh, there is data in different places. 
you can't pick and choose where you want to run uh, your workload. You have to have the flexibility to say, I can go and read data from different places. So what's next data introduces this uh, notion of hybrid um, for you. Okay? The third aspect of it is, um, if you really think about it, uh, you know, when people talk about IBM mainframes or System Z, they think, oh, you know, it's, it's archaic, maybe uh, no one's using it or maybe it's dead. That's not the fact. The reality is that you know, most of the things that matter, if you've traveled here, if you've swiped your credit card, then there's a very high chance that you've touched a mainframe. Okay? So one of the things to understand is that we want, um, we want to make all of this great data available for other uh, work that you're doing. So what's next data has this data gate um, think of it as a feature that allows you to seamlessly replicate data from the, um, the um, mainframe onto the distributed system so that you can combine it and use it um, you know, in, in different contexts. Okay. Okay, now, I don't know if it's as fuzzy for you as it is for me, but um, uh, you know, if you look at the, the different pieces, just reiterating what I said earlier, um, from a what's next data perspective, what we're doing is we're using Gen AI to better understand our data. Okay? That's the one aspect of it. Then the second aspect of it is um, the query engines. I told you about the different options that you have, both IBM and non-IBM query engines that operate on the same data, which means that you're not creating copies, lesser challenges with quality. Okay? The um, key feature is the open format both open table formats as well as open file formats. So there is no vendor lock-in. You have the flexibility to say, um, I can use any engine I want, and I can keep moving without having to worry about it. The what's next AI pillar. Um, so what you're seeing here is a screenshot of uh, what we call a prompt lab. Okay? Um, so with the what's next AI pillar, what we provide is multiple things. One is we uh, make available both IBM language models as well as uh, non-IBM language models, open language models, or from uh, um, other, um, uh, you know, other providers. Okay? What the prompt lab allows you to do is exactly as the name suggests, it allows you to do your prompts, make sure that your uh, models are able to respond to what you're trying to get to. Some of the other um, capabilities around what's next AI is, uh, so there is the one side of it is the training of the model and uh, tuning of the model with your context. The other aspect of it is the, the um, operationalization and the um, uh, inferencing side of it, okay? So both for Gen AI as well as uh, traditional machine learning and AI models, okay? Um, we've got, um, we've introduced recently something called Instruct Lab. So what that is, is uh, the idea is that in the, in the uh, open source world, how you have different um, developers contribute to, to code, um, we're bringing that concept to models itself, to Gen AI models. So the idea is that each one of us has um, uh, you know, um, uh, a focus on a different uh, space. And the idea is we should all be able to collaborate and then bring our intelligence together and make the model smarter. Okay. Not only is everyone else benefiting from this, we also get to benefit from uh, everyone else's knowledge. Okay. So that's what Instruct Lab is. Again, I'm oversimplifying it just in the, uh, the uh, you know, amount of time we have. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned operationalization. So MLOps, again, both for traditional machine learning and AI, machine learning and AI as well as Gen AI, we've got highly scalable um, uh, you know, mechanisms around MLOps, being able to operationalize it and make it available to the applications that will benefit from it. Okay, so governance is a very loosely used term. A lot of people um, confuse it perhaps sometimes to security. Um, so what we mean by governance is um, acting responsibly, keeping track of what you're doing, and making sure there is a sense of stewardship so that there is somebody responsible and answerable for everything that you're doing. So here, if you look at this really complicated picture, not really. Um, so one, you start always with the build side of it. Okay? So whatever your model is, you're, you're building a model, and then you go through an iterative process. You say, OK, I, I build my model uh, based on uh, whatever my metrics are. Um, I evaluate it. I, I determine if it's good enough for me as at that point in time. Um, so I'm capturing some metrics. 
So the idea is that I want to, as I capture the metrics, I want to have an inventory of the model, and I want to capture all the metrics around that inventory of the model itself. Okay? Then once you have a model that's half good, you deploy it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> in the deployment phase, again, the, the cycle doesn't stop. You're still constantly monitoring, evaluating the model, and you're collecting metrics. Okay? So the idea is that as you're doing that, you want to capture that as a part of your model inventory. Okay? So the, if you think about it, what you're really trying to achieve here is at any point in time, if um, your end user is using a, a chat bot or whatever it is that benefits from AI, if it is giving you uh, an, either an inappropriate answer or a not good enough answer, and somebody says, why are you responding in this particular way, you should be able to go back and figure out what the problem was. Okay? Um, perhaps you have to fine tune your parameters or change something the way you're doing something. That, that's what we uh, cater for. Okay, so now how, how does all this fit together? Okay, so we've got single store. I, I mentioned there's a lot of data coming in, and there's a lot of data in real time coming in. Um, so very important. Um, so how does all of this fit in? So from a data integration perspective, from a real time streaming pipeline perspective, we've got uh, stream sets, which has the, the control plane and data plane separation. So being able to scale your data plane, run it anywhere closer to the data, and then you've got the control plane for the design aspect of it and the orchestration aspect of it. The um, pipelines are then able to do two things. One is they're able to go and write to uh, data in an open format. Um, I, I used Iceberg earlier as an example, so it doesn't matter. It could be any open format. But also what they're able to do is write in real time or near real time to single store. Okay? Um, the picture doesn't uh, illustrate this, but the pipeline is able to write both to the open format as well as to single store. So now what's the point of that? Um, so you've got your end users or the beneficiaries, um, whether they're using a dashboard or whatever it is, they, or an app, whatever it is they're doing. Now what they have is a choice of one, to use the, the engine of their choice, leverage the common data in an open format, um, benefit from the real-time aspect of single store without making additional copies of data, okay? And even take it one step further. Perhaps there is some enrichment of data that you want to do as a part of your real-time activity. So single store is now able to go and do that enrichment and in the near future, able to feed back to the open table format the enriched data so that from a data lake or a lake house perspective, um, you, know, you can look back at enriched data and benefit from it. Okay, so that, that's the point of that. Uh, a slightly bigger picture. Um, <clears throat> so we've got our data management capabilities, both IBM and non-IBM capabilities. Okay? Depending on what you're doing, you pick the right um, uh, you know, capability that you, you want to use. On the right-hand side, we've got our uh, what's next and uh, the AI capabilities, both Gen AI as well as traditional. What is very important is the, the middle part of it. Okay? What is also very important is the middle part of it. It's one thing to be able to collect data and, and do some transformations, but the, the middle part of it is what brings the governance aspect to everything. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so I've got high-level buckets in there, but if you really think about it, what we do is we go through a discovery process. We go and do profiling of data, we do classification of data, we do quality analysis, and then we're capturing all of this as a part of the, our catalog. So that way, not only are you having an answerable way and a, a governed kind of landscape, um, but you also have a, a centralized catalog that people can go and search and find assets from. Okay? So that's the, that's the point of that. So, <clears throat> That's all I had. I know I was rushing. I'm not sure if I used more than 15 minutes or not, but um, uh, that's all I had, and, and thank you for your time.